Hey, on this month's episode of Your Admin, we're taking a look at the city's vehicle maintenance department and seeing how they're able to maintain nearly 600 vehicles. We'll also be looking at a special and fun event put on each year by the Parks and Recreation Department. And if you love dogs, you won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to this month's episode of Your Edmund. As you can see, I'm working on my truck. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to have to change the oil in my wife's car. Uh, hey, Dwight, real quick, this is getting a little slippery. Can you hand me, there's a horizontal ratchet wrench over there. Can you grab that for me, please? Relatively quick. It should be right on top. Kind of hurry, because this is slipping. Uh, yeah, just grab the, hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, there, oh, you don't work on cars much, do you? Uh, yeah, that's okay. You know, as I'm working on my car, I'm thinking about the other car maintenance I do around here. It makes me think of the city of Edmond and how they maintain several hundred vehicles in their fleet. Can you imagine keeping up with that many cars and trucks and tractors? They seem to handle it pretty well. Here's a look at the city of Edmond's vehicle maintenance department. Oh, the wrench. Before a police vehicle is ready to patrol Edmund streets, it must be upfitted. All of the special equipment that makes it a proper police car has to be installed by a technician in the vehicle maintenance department. A newly purchased police car comes to the shop with only its black and white paint job. We get all the equipment for the, for the unit. We install overheads, uh, the plastic seats in the rear, all, this, all the radios, all the sirens remove all the headlights. I mean, when you're doing this, you have to remove the whole interior of a car to run the wiring, all the lighting, uh, and all the packages that are in the vehicles. The vehicle maintenance department maintains nearly 600 vehicles of all types in Edmonds fleet. Those can range from backhoes to half-ton pickups to solid waste trucks, all the way to, you know, 18-wheelers and 40-foot floats behind them. I mean, it's a big array of vehicles. We also have one ton uh, pickups that are in that same variety, one and a half ton pickups, two and a half ton pickups, Pierce fire trucks, fire engines. We also get some uh, repairs on uh, generators. They maintain the CityLink buses, Edmund Electric's fleet, solid waste trucks, and the normal utility trucks you see in Edmund streets each day. If it has anything to do with the city, it runs through this facility. Nearly 11,000 repair orders are processed in a year's time. By checking belts, hoses, oil levels, and other preventative maintenances, this department successfully keeps vehicles operational and their customers satisfied. Believe me, nobody wants to be without their vehicle. Uh, and in a lot of cases, they can't do anything without that piece of equipment that they have to have for the day. If solid waste trucks aren't running each day, trash piles up. If police and fire have broken vehicles, response times during emergencies are affected. The vehicle maintenance crew realizes the importance of keeping the city's fleet operational, especially the emergency vehicles. We don't have the luxury like a private shop would of saying, drop it off today and we'll get to it later. We, we, we have to get them in and get them out. By being an in-house department, vehicle maintenance is able to save the city money. When the police department purchased new motorcycles in 2013, several mechanics attended training to be able to complete repairs for the motorcycles in their shop. Before police motorcycles were supported by an outside company, which was very costly, vehicle maintenance is also cutting fuel costs by converting some of the city's fleet to operate on propane. And then there's the full Napa parts store, conveniently located inside the vehicle maintenance facility, which stocks highly used vehicle components. This addition saves time and costs on repairs. We purchase all of our vehicle parts from this location, all that we can that they stock, uh, something they do not stock. They go out and uh, have par parts delivery runs for us. Technicians in vehicle maintenance can perform something as simple as an oil change, but also be able to work on internal engine and transmission repairs for various types of vehicles. One day they're working on a trash truck, the next day they're under a fire truck, and tomorrow they may be inside of a backhoe. Uh, so they got to really have a broad knowledge 
uh, and a good mechanical understanding and be able to read all the technical data that we get in here. That's probably one of the hardest and difficult things we, we have to follow through every year with is training. Uh, you know, we have a variety of different vehicles in the fleet. Uh, we go from weed eaters to graders. Uh, to have that training is a pretty, pretty tough uh, pill to swallow every year and try to get training for. Many of the technicians in vehicle maintenance are certified by the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. Even their working environment has been recognized as a blue seal of excellence shop for over 12 years in a row. As technology improves each year, the mechanics must learn the changes and know how to repair the new equipment. Understanding the inner workings of emergency vehicles like fire trucks can be challenging. Those are pretty extensive. The tests are pretty pretty tough. Overall, the pumping systems to the fire trucks, the electronic controls, the computers, the communication systems. Uh, we have in-house training where we do you know, electrical training, fuel injection training. We go to factory schools, hydraulic training. I mean, it, there's a lot. Uh, compressed natural gas training. Schedules throughout the work week accommodate the many city departments and their unusual shifts. There are even mechanics on call every weekend and holiday. Vehicle maintenance staff is considered essential personnel. That means when the rest of the city shut down because it's snowing, we're here. We don't, we don't get those days off. If it's a, a natural disaster, if there's some kind of emergency, we're called in 24-7. So we, we have to be here. Not only are they available, but they have to be able to solve unique dilemmas. When large machinery breaks down in unusual environments, they're called to make repairs. And these guys really have to be able to improvise at times and do it in a safe, quick manner to get what we need accomplished. Uh, and I think that's one of the biggest gifts a lot of them bring to the table. They'll find a way to make it work and so we can get it out, get it in here and get it repaired. We have to think outside the box and sometimes we have to fabricate tools, we have to make tools, we have to make components, um, we have to do things to equipment, you know, that, that the average person wouldn't even imagine sometimes just to get it serviced and get it moving again. Even when tornadoes came through more in May of 2013, mechanics were on standby in case another city needed them. They all called in and said, hey, if you need me, I'm here. You know, it's not very often you get a crew that calls the supervisor and says, if you need me, just call and I'll come in. And that means they have to be dedicated. You have to be to do what they do. Uh, not everybody wants to work on a trash truck because <laughs> uh, obviously they get pretty messy. Uh, but they're also very complicated with a lot of moving pieces. Uh, so they're very, very dedicated to what they do. Very good guys, hardworking guys. The most rewarding thing about this job is uh, knowing that we do a good and safe repair to, to all the vehicles. Knowing that the uh, other departments do trust our ability and, and know we have the technical skills to maintain the fleet. Wow, 36. You've gained a lot of weight, honey. Hey there, I'm just measuring Nellie up for another costume. She just loves a new costume. You can tell, just look at her. Each year there's a special event put on by the Parks and Recreation Department called the Crazy Kids Dog Show. I think we might try and get Nellie entered next year. We talked with a participant and her mom who have both been involved with the Crazy Kids Dog Show for many years now. Whether you have a dog or not, this looks like a fun event to check out. This is Coley. You've probably noticed that she's not your average looking Pomeranian. That's because she's been dyed to resemble another animal for the Crazy Kids Dog Show, a fun event put on every September by the Parks and Recreation Department. The event is for children 12 and under. For Jay Lee, this is her last year to compete, so she decided to really do something different. Coley um, always likes to follow me around and she's always buzzing around me, I thought, and so she could be a bumblebee and I could be a flower. What we did was we dyed her with semi-permanent dye, um, black and yellow, and we put feathers for her wings and um, feather antennas on her head. For the small dog category, Coley and Jaylee came in third place. As you can see, they're pretty much inseparable, have been since Coley was born. And I saw her since she was two days old and I fell in love with her. Jay Lee's family has quite the love for animals, especially dogs. In fact, Jay Lee spends a lot of time at her mom's pet grooming shop in Edmond. Coley is usually there too, watching as Jay Lee helps with the family business. My husband has worked with her, counting money, she runs the front. Um, the clients actually are impressed by her knowledge of being able to 
you know, do credit card sales and ring up retail sales and ring up grooming. And I bathe the dogs and I'm starting to learn how to groom them. For many years, Jaylee's parents volunteered at the Crazy Kids Dog Show. When Jaylee was old enough to compete, she began participating. When I was about four and a half, maybe five years old, I started participating in it. And I'd go and I'd dress up um, every time. One time I was a police officer and my German Shepherd was a canine. And then one time I was a cook and my dog was a hot dog. And we've just done different things throughout the years. There's lots of dogs there and they're all dressed up. Some have different costumes and they have a rink and when they call your category that you're in, you'll go and participate in that category. It's just been a part of our life and it's just something she's always looked forward to. My favorite thing is seeing everybody's different ideas and how creative they get with it and um, seeing all the different dogs and how neat, unique they are. Over the years, Jaylee and her dogs have taken home several best look-alike trophies. One year, they even took home the Best in Show Award. Watching the event may be one of the best parts of the show, though. It's really comical to go and watch the little tiny four and five-year-olds trying to take their dog and they're wearing this costume and they're tripping and they're, you know, kind of like fumbling around and it's just so cute. The Crazy Kids Dog Show takes place each year in September. To find out more about events going on with the Parks and Recreation Department, please visit edmundparks.com. Well, that's our show this month. We hope you've learned a lot about how the city maintains all the different vehicles in the fleet. And if you love dogs, you need to go to the Crazy Kids Dog Show next year. In the meantime, visit some of the dogs that play at the dog park on 33rd Street. To learn more about the city of Edmond, visit edmondok.com or become a fan of ours on Facebook. Just search City of Edmond Government. And remember that all of our videos can be watched on YouTube. I'm Eric Smith. I'll see you next time on Your Edmond. Ready, Nellie?